property or association plan for your business. Has anyone shared the concept of sustainability with you? What about the need to protect the rights of minority shareholders? What are those ingredients germane to having effective meetings? For these and many more, tune in to a corporate governance platform every Thursday on MITV, your darling station, on DSTV 255 and UHF 43. At 4 30 p.m. Corporate Governance Platform is your best medium for informative and educative strategies for the practice of the corporate governance profession. Institute, Institute of, of Chartered Secretaries, Secretaries and Administrators, Administrators of Nigeria, Nigeria. ICSAN, the, the Hub of, of Governance, governance Professionals. Professionals. You're welcome back. It's the Corporate Governance Platform. Proudly brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan, the Hub of Governance Professionals, and coming to you from MITV. I am Tunde Odeyemi, and in a couple of minutes, we'll be discussing relevance of whistleblowing to corporate sustainability. I have my distinguished guest right here in the studio. He will be leading the conversation on the relevance of uh, whistleblowing to corporate sustainability. Mr. Yomi Adebanjo, a distinguished fellow of the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria. Mr. Yomi Adebanjo is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, as well as a council member of the Institute. He was a former Chief Executive Officer of City Secretaries, a company secretarial firm, where he managed more than 50 companies on company secretarial, governance, and compliance matters. He is presently the company secretary of Fixing HPRC and is a trainer with particular interest in compliance and corporate governance. He will bring to bear his experience on this particular uh, episode of the program. Mr. Yomiadi Banjo, you are welcome to Corporate Governance Platform. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee. Okay, it's nice to have you again on the show. Thank you for having me. This is perhaps your third time on the show. Yes. Oh, in, in football parlance, you would have said that you have scored a hat trick. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, you are welcome to the show. Thank you. We'll be discussing whistleblowing and its relevance to corporate sustainability. Let's kickstart this conversation by asking what is whistleblowing and what is the purpose of whistleblowing? Without being academic, Do you have continuity or association plan for your business? Has anyone shared the concept of sustainability with you? What about the need to protect the rights of minority shareholders? What are those ingredients germane to having effective meetings? For these and many more, tune in to a corporate governance platform every Thursday on MITV, your darling station, on DSTV 255 and UHF 43. At 4 30 p.m. Corporate Governance Platform is your best medium for informative and educative strategies for the practice of the corporate governance profession. Institute, Institute of, of Chartered, Chartered Secretaries and, and Administrators of Nigeria, Nigeria. ISAN, the, the Hub of, of Governance, governance professionals. Exposure. Discrete exposure. Okay. And the word discrete is underlined because it's not something you want to do, people say you do it. Mm. Yet it is a legitimate act of yours, mm. backed by policies, backed by now becoming legislative. So it's a discrete. The word discrete is, 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 is what makes it whistleblowing. Uh, sometimes you want to think people can make it in the open, but for protection, we are exposing some bad practices, it has to be undercover to a very large extent. Okay, what then it is relevant to corporate governance? Uh, if you want to have sustainable organization, certain things that are of value to you, you want to keep, and it is the tendencies of people to want to violate them. Okay. In a way that undermines the, the sustainable intention of the people, you know, and of the owner of the business. So its main purpose is to ensure there is sustainability and continued relevance of the organization with its values. It's about value protection. It's about value protection. Value protection. If there is no whistleblowing, when the values are being violated, you know, but somebody must be there to say, look, what I think is wrong. If not in the open, of fear of attack, 
they should have that backing to say, say it through the, man, through, the, through the normal channel that what is being done here is bad. Okay. But discreetly. Discreetly? Discreetly. Okay. Something that can undermine the value of the business. Okay. It has to be done discreetly. Discreetly. When something that can undermine the value of the business value is discovered. Is discovered. Okay. Either undermining the value, the core values of the business itself, or the value for the stakeholders. Okay. That is likely to undermine the okay. longevity, the prosperity, the you know the long uh, 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 long living of that business. Okay. The Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance provides that there should be whistleblowing policy or framework that should be made known to the employees and some external stakeholders. Now, how can the company go about that? Mm, again, uh, looking at it in practice, most companies do it by having that policy on their website. Okay. Companies actually go out of their, I mean, in, entrench a policy which show the framework, the structure, the, the methodology, the procedure for blowing the whistle in writing and conspicuously displayed in a place where employees, even customers can see it for purposes of, of drawing attention to anomalies. Okay. I'll be discreetly. 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 Okay. Do you think it is better for the information that is received by through the whistleblowing? to be investigated internally or to be investigated externally? An external party, usually a consultant, cannot know more than the insider. Okay. The value you are alleged to have been violated is first known inside before the outsiders know it. So you first have to internally investigate it okay. before you can call an outsider to investigate. Okay. They want to report to an outsider based on the value you have given to them. That these are your values and these are the uh, uh, protection mechanism put in place. It has not been violated. Okay. Then it becomes investigated by third party. Like an auditor. He doesn't know except what to give to him. The same thing with this you doing. It's a reported allegation. I mean, it's an allegation of infraction. So you have to describe it first before a third party can come in. So both must work together. But the first step is to have the internal procedure deal with it as a matter of, you know, many of these things can lead to what I can call dismissal. Mm. And if it must lead to dismissal, you must have set up something internally to look at it before okay. you have an external party give you an opinion to validate what you think you have seen. The party outside is only by dating it. He's not going to tell you something new from what you already know. But he uses his own mechanism to validate that based on what I've seen and what is on ground as a policy, as a value for this business, and in governance generally, there's a validation here. His own coming in is to authenticate, to validate what you have reported. So the, the, the both must work together. Both the internal and the external. Both internal and external. In fact, some companies firm out their whistleblowing platform to okay. a third party. But that still doesn't mean that that external party can start and finish the investigation. It still has to come home. What are the internal procedures in place that has not been validated? Okay. okay. You said earlier on that um, it has to be done discreetly. Now, if it is done discreetly, what if the organization requires to get more, you know, details about that particular thing that was whistleblown from the person that whistleblew? How would the organization go about it? To me, it's very easy. Where you see that policy being properly written, it will tell you the procedure to follow. And the uh, uh, the medium through which you give your message and the content. In other words, it defines everything about what we are giving. It must be complete. You've got to report an infraction. 
Okay. And that infraction has the do's and don'ts. Okay. Prove everything. Mm -hmm. Because every whistleblower is first of all told how to whistleblow. Because it can counter it can be counterproductive against you. It can come back against you. You have to be clear in your mind. You have to be sure what you are reporting. So if that mechanism is well defined, the procedure is well defined, information needed to prosecute that particular offense should be contained in the report. Okay. Okay. You understand? So that I won't even need to want to know you. Okay. Or to come back to you. Because the policy I put in place is a guide for you to whistleblow properly. Okay. So even a whistleblower is cautious is cautious. You have to be very careful. Okay, the policy or the framework now should have given the opportunity for the whistleblower to give detailed information. Give detailed information. He knows about the, the, the policy. It is open. So the website is wherever the company puts it for everybody to see. So he's guided already. And I won't even need to know him or her. Except in the event that what he has alleged becomes a false. Okay. Then we want to know who said so. Okay. But if everything he has said, he has followed the procedure properly and it turned out to be true, you don't need to know him. You don't need any further information. Okay. Now, yeah. As an addendum to that, is it necessary to give the whistleblower updates on the investigation or the steps that is taken by the organization? And if it is necessary, what are those things that the organizations could do to update the whistleblower? Update? It's a question for me. Update even what? It's a stakeholder already. Yes. It's in the vicinity. It's like a mass parade. He yes. sees you, he knows what you are doing. It's you who doesn't know whether he's winking or what. So he may not know the steps the organization is taking. He knows that he has whistleblown. Is but he may not know the step that the organization is taking. His interest, if genuine, if genuine, his interest is not beyond, I want to see this anomaly corrected. I want to see details here. Okay. So it can be anywhere to watch it. It can be anywhere to monitor it himself. If I was to blow about the company, it means I know a little bit about the company and I have access. If I could have access to the channel of whistleblowing, then I should have the channel also to know what is happening about the case I reported. So a company need not put upon himself the effort of wanting to satisfy the whistleblower okay. with the updates. The, the whistleblower is in the environment, is there. We know him. He knows himself. Okay, I want to take it from the aspect because, of... Sorry, sir. Because if you insist that the company should update the whistleblower, then you are then saying that the architecture put around the whole thing, the whole framework, is violated. Because even the company need not know who the whistleblower is, not to talk of giving him feedback. For instance, he's walking by the corridor, discreetly, he writes, and talks into the, into the box. And you still want to know him? Go there and read it. What we read there, investigate it. If it is true, it is true. Okay, in, in, in a situation where the whistleblower is known, yeah. and the whistleblower alleges victimization, and probably reports to the board or the regulator, and the board or the regulator have a conflicting position, what do you think the whistleblower should do? Well, it, the question is complete. Yes. If there is a conflict between the regulator and the board, it is a question of can you know me more than I know myself? The regulator is outside there. Except that infraction touches on regulatory violation, the regulator should defer to the board of that company if it concerns a company. But if the whistleblower says something that actually attacks or is attached to, regulate, to regulation and the regulator wants to be interested in unraveling it, that's where you can see there is a conflict. And if there is a conflict, the regulator should be able to take the position of the board as, as, as valid enough. It's like saying, it's like crying on behalf of the bereaved. That's where I look at. If it is truly a regulatory infraction, sometimes it may also be criminal. 
Mm. Then it goes beyond a mere whistleblowing of uh, a value system. Do you understand? Then it is more in the public. Because what I'm talking about whistleblowing, what you shouldn't do as a manager of a business, you are doing it. Or you are stealing money. You know, whistleblowing go beyond just criminal intention sometimes. To value, to ethics. Is it ethical or unethical? You know. Let me open. You are dating your secretary. Is it okay. ethical? And somebody blow the whistle around that. Is that enough for a regulator to be interested? <laughs> no. So if it has to go to the level of a regulator, then we are talking more not of moral infractions here, not moral violation. We are talking more of uh, 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 a violation of laid down rules and regulations. This is the public of, 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 of public interest sometimes. Okay, how would you reconcile the idea that whistleblowers should be anonymous with the initiatives of giving incentives to whistleblower? If it's anonymous, how do you know the person to give incentives to? How do you know the person to compensate? It's a paradox. Okay. You want this person not to be known. It should be essentially discreet. At the same time, you say, well, if you're able to unravel this, if whoever reports this goes on with this. If that can also be made, made discreet, so be it. But so long as you want to reward a whistleblower in the open, then there's no protection for him. Exactly. But if you can also, through the same channel, reward him discreetly, without anybody knowing, apart from himself, maybe, maybe it is, they can go together. If it's going to be rewarded, it's known already. If, no, 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 no. I can reward you without somebody else knowing. Okay. It's, in fact, it's biblical. What the uh, right hand is doing, the left will not know. Isn't it? <laughs> to the so, so know about that. So, rewarding doesn't mean that's also being the open. It's not ceremonial. Is bring your account. But again, it's conflicting, even in our minds, that you want somebody to do this without us knowing him. At the same time, you say you want to, you want to incentivize. It is self defeating. But so long as both can go discreetly to the same extent, well, it's a thing of management. If they can manage it, whoever can manage it, so be it. Okay, the, the, the federal government recently developed a national policy on whistleblowing. Do you think such policy is sufficient, or is it better to have an act of national assembly on whistleblowing? And if we are supposed to have an act of, act of national assembly, why do you think we should do that? Well, an act of national assembly for whistleblower, to me, is becoming, uh, it is going against the overall objective of whistleblowing. You can't put up a law or enact a law for whistleblowing without then unraveling the identity of a, of a whistleblower. Okay. There must just be a provision that identifies it. But that is not the only purpose. Identification may be, you know, there are things that look like whistleblowing, but they are not whistleblowing. Okay. You know, if you make a complaint, that's not necessarily whistleblowing. If you report a case openly, it's a different thing. But whistleblowing in the origin of it, properly construing it, is something you want to do without people knowing. I will support the legislation outright here. In fact, if you see the code of corporate governance uh, put forward by SEC in those days, before this national code, it, 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 it did a lot of, a, a very good job about whistleblowing in terms of protection, that you don't need too much of, of, uh, of legislation. It's a moral thing. Whistleblowing attacks first and foremost to moral violation. Because if that to be criminal, there's court for it. Okay. You know, but if the whistleblowing is now concerning, is now about something that in itself is criminal, then it's another ball game. So you do not support I, an act of national person, assembly? As a person, I won't because there are, there are machineries in place already that touches on whistleblowing. 
in those days of Obasanjo, so there was Safikom. Okay. It's talking about if you're not properly served, say yeah. that. In the CFCC, they have their own technology. Who know? If that agency is investigating you, you probably will know. Okay, those know. machineries are on ground. Yes. Now, uh, to wrap it up, yes, and I want you to take this in 30 seconds, please. What's the final advice to organizations on whistleblowing? 30 seconds. It's a good thing to do. Let your policy be robust, make it open uh, on your website, everywhere people can see it. And it should be clear enough for people to know what procedure they should follow to whistleblow. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. Adebanjo, for coming on the show. This is where we wrap it up on corporate governance uh, platform. I would like to say thank you for joining on the show, and we invite you to join us again next week, same station, same time. I remain tuned to the other me. Keep spreading the gospel of corporate governance, and bye for now. Do you have continuity or association plan for your business? Has anyone shared the concept of sustainability with you? What about the need to protect the rights of minority shareholders? What are those ingredients germane to having effective meetings? For these and many more, tune in to a corporate governance platform every Thursday on MITV, your darling station, on DSTV 255 and UHF 43 at 4.30 p.m. Corporate governance platform is your best medium for informative and educative strategies for the profit.